Hello, hello, hello. My name is Caroline. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm here in my duck sweatshirt today because it is maybe 45 degrees in my apartment. Even with my space heaters running, I'll be damned if I actually turn on the heating system. I have not even turned it on this winter yet and i'm cold since i've last posted i've gained quite a few subscribers so if you're new here or if you're not new here i really appreciate you and welcome uh, my name's caroline i do some book content i have been wanting to get more into my kind of commentary content but i don't know if it's resonated super well and also i want to start talking more about horror because if you can't tell my girlfriend and I really love horror. I'm also lesbian, so that will be a running theme in my channel. So to start, or let me fill you in about what we're talking about today. I wanted to begin my journey into talking about horror and books and mix it together and talk about books that you may like if you like this movie or TV show. And on the contrary, movies and TV shows that you might like if you like this book. I thought this would be a fun idea because I'm always looking for recommendations. If you're watching like a booktube channel, you're also probably looking for recommendations or you just want to hear someone talk about things that you like. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about some horror books, movies, and TV shows. Yeah. So the first one, if you know me or if you know this channel, you know I love My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. It is a book about a girl named Jade. She's a teenager. She suspects that a slasher serial killer is plaguing her town and it kind of is in the throes of her working through her trauma, her working through the gentrification that is rapidly happening in her hometown, etc, etc. And um, I thought this was so good. She's also obsessed with slashers. If you can't tell, like that's like the theme of the the book my cat's gonna knock over my camera hi most other girl thank you so much um but yeah that's like the theme of the book is it's a slasher book and she's obsessed with slashers and the entire book is just filled with a bunch of slasher references and it's great um and i loved it i thought it, <laughs> i thought it was super emotionally compelling and um I love it. And so in order for me to aptly recommend a book that, or a movie, sorry, that's going to be similar to this, I could recommend like Scream, you know, Friday the 13th series, Halloween, something slasher, um, typically like something just kind of a classic. But I mean, if you like horror movies, you've probably seen those. And I wanted to recommend a little bit something different, a little bit controversial something about controversial and that is a classic horror story it's on netflix and it is a um newer ish movie i want to say it was probably made in 2018 or later um maybe 2020 2021 it's an italian film about this woman who is on roots to i i watched it a long time ago so maybe i think her parents how um something's happening she either lost a job or a relationship. She's in a weird part of her life and she is going through the Italian countryside to get to her destination and she decides to do like a rideshare program and she decides to get on this kind of bus with a bunch of other people who are also going to various de destinations. And um, her, the bus driver, um, the rideshare guy kind of running the show, he is like a wannabe vlogger slash streamer and he's kind of like, you know, doing the whole thing he's like recording the entire thing and um then they get stuck in this really weird place they don't know how i think it's like a crash happens and they get stuck in this crazy place off the grid type beat and they don't know what's going on and it kind of goes from there and i thought that this was a like a good pick because it kind of has the same tone like it's spooky but it's also meta in that sense and it's also a slasher and it's newer so i thought that that would be a fun vibe, vibe. If, if you, you like, like that, that you might like that, that. next also, if you know this channel, you know I love the book Mrs. March by Virginia Feto. And there are a couple things, a couple movies here that I think would be pretty good. Um, but I also have some of these movies twice on the list. So I think for this one, okay, for this one I had one that I narrowed it down to because I had other ones that make more sense. And I think that a fit movie for this book, if you like this book, you'll like 
The Night House. It recently came out. I want to say, again, I don't really know the years, but I want to say 2021. Wait, let me talk about Mrs. March first. Mrs. March is basically a book about this woman who's in her, I think, 50s, 60s, and she's doing pretty well living with her husband, who is a popular author. He finally releases his newest book, and suddenly everyone suspects that the book is about her, and the book is basically really terrible to its main character who everyone thinks is her um and everyone starts talking about how her husband must hate her and of course this main character is extremely anxious and she goes on this kind of journey of trying to figure out what's going on with her husband and it kind of delves into kind of a psychological moment and i thought it was really cool and i really liked it i thought it was great emotionally compelling etc and so i decided to think of a movie that does a similar vibe and I think that is The Night House. It's basically a movie about this woman who loses her husband and she starts uncovering a bunch of secrets about him and it's very confusing as to whether she is imagining it or if it actually happened and what's the truth and what's the reality and all the bends and twists and turns. I feel like it's a similar vibe. I liked both of these a lot and I would recommend that. So check it out. This next one's kind of a doozy. I recently uh, read Other People's Clothes by Kala Henkel and I thought it was really good, really emotionally compelling. Took you on a lot of places. It's a slow burn. You wouldn't maybe call it a horror book, but I will. I would and I will and I'll do that proudly um but i would say that honestly this one's kind of similar really really different and also you've definitely seen jennifer's body so this is more of like a if you like jennifer's body read this book i i, I would have to say jennifer's body and i feel like other people's clothes was kind of like jennifer's body but without the supernatural aspect like i don't know there was there's was, it was kind of better than jennifer's body um but yeah i don't know i thought they were kind of similar vibe i thought that if you like jennifer's body you'd like other people's clothes and vice versa also if you are like me and you have a weird like hyper fixation with the amanda knox trial every few months um read this book because it takes place in 2007 so yeah um that's that hey guys sorry i'm editing and i'm sick with the flu but i realized i really didn't say anything about the book and what it's about um also i don't really think that this book is like jennifer's body at all but when i was reading it i kept getting that energy and when people would ask me what i was reading i'd be like it's kind of like Jennifer's body, even though it's not at all, but I just kept getting it. So if you read this and you kind of agree, let me know. Um, but yeah, about this book, it's basically about this woman who she's a college student and she loses her best friend. And so to cope with her trauma and everything, she decides to go study abroad in Berlin and she ends up rooming with this girl from her class and they stay in this author's house who's off writing her next book. And through their exploring the scene of Berlin, they get the feeling that this author is like watching them and writing her next book about them. Things get pretty intense. It's super well done there's some time jumps and i thought it was pretty immersive it was a slow burn very atmospheric and i was thinking about berlin for like weeks so go read this book and let me know if you agree next uh the deep by nick cutter okay the deep is basically about this man who is living in a world in which there's a crazy virus right and this virus makes people forget things we don't really learn that much about the virus in the damn book so it's kind of pointless but then he gets called by his super smart brother um, to go to the bottom of the ocean where this his brother, who he hasn't talked to in years, is like, I'm finding the cure for this disease. And so he's like, okay, I trust you, brother, even though you are kind of like mean to me. I'll go down to the bottom of the ocean, like eight miles deep into the Marianas Trench. And so then once he gets there, he's like, something's not right. Something's going on. And what is this strange force that's happening beneath the ocean? And shit happens and so i am gonna recommend the thing by john carpenter because i feel like it's a similar vibe isolation as a fear it made no sense during this part filming the video but i'm recommending the thing by john carpenter because the themes are men in isolation there's a dog there's a monster there's mysterious there's elements that they have to brave and it's crazy so i recommended the thing for that reason um also obviously the thing is a classic and also nick cutter is like a really popular horror author um but if you like either of these go watch the other one because they are somewhat similar i like the thing more than the deep though um because it's a fucking classic and it's beautiful the practical effects are amazing so yeah Next, The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. If you don't know it, 
Now you know it. It's basically a classic. Come on, guys. And um, it's also like uh, everyone's fave. Mike Flanagan made it into a beautiful like drama series, horror series. It's really good. I love it. Um, But also, I'm not going to recommend the TV series. Like You should watch it. um, But also, I wanted to think of something a little bit more meat and potatoes for this um and it's basically about this woman who is kind of going through it and she gets invited to go to hill house to stay with a bunch of other people to determine whether or not there's actually paranormal activity there and she basically becomes enthralled by the house um, with her group of friends she has a lot of anxiety but she starts to experience things that seem to only be affecting her truly and the paranoia is honestly like the main source of horror in this Uh, book and I think it's pretty effective I know people don't really like it because it's super understated in the horror but I think it's a really great book and really well written and I love Shirley Jackson um but I wanted to think about like a movie that kind of brings a different energy to the table but similar in interest like if you like paranormal type stuff um you might like this and I wanted to say Saint Maud Saint Maud is not really like a deep cut anymore like a lot of people have watched and like Saint Maud um so it's not really a deep cut much at all right now um but I think it's kind of like if you like the disturbing ish elements of Haunting of Hill House you'll really like Saint Maud. Saint Maud I have some qualms with though I think that it's like portrayal of like lesbianism is really fucked up I think it's like a religious horror that doesn't actually like super comment on what she thinks sin is like it was kind of like confusing because like I know that we're not supposed to be agreeing with the main character, but we also kind of are. And so the the way that she, like, talked about lesbianism as a sin, like, you thought, I thought, my girlfriend and I thought that she was going to be, like, gay this whole time. Um, And she was just, like, suppressing. But really, it wasn't like that at the end. It was just kind of like she was actually, like, experiencing spiritual psychosis, correct? Um, And so for that reason, in terms of it being, like, her, you know, spiraling a bit um, because of various factors, I would recommend St. Maud. Also, I don't want to talk too much about the movie here because I don't want to spoil anything. It's best to go in without knowing anything. And that's that. That's that. Next one, I'm going to say Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. Kind of like an eh book. It kept me interested, but also I kind of predicted it. I'm so sorry. And I was also disappointed to find out that Riley Sager was a man and not a woman. But um, if you like this book, you will like archive 81 maybe because a lot of people don't like that show a lot of people think that show is really boring and it got canceled and whatever but lock every door is basically about this girl who moves in to this intricate embellished famous wealthy apartment building to be an apartment sitter so she basically gets paid to stay in this apartment and obviously if you like horror your alarm bells are going off you're like obviously she's gonna die or try to get killed by someone living in the damn place um but she doesn't obviously think that she's like no i need money because it does comment a lot on like the qualms of class etc etc and it's pretty well done in that sense I would say um but it's really interesting I you kind of have the feeling that like this apartment building has got to have some culty element right there's something more than meets the eye here in the history etc and so for that reason that's why I'm recommending archive 81 because not only was the outcome of the place similar the storytelling was kind of similar archive 81 is a mixed media type found footage and like non-found footage show that's kind of a slow burn but i thought it was pretty good i liked it um and it kind of has the same vibe i don't want to give too much away but if you like lock every door or archive 81 you might like the other one next is another stephen graham jones night of the mannequin and for this one i would recommend um good night mommy so the night of the mannequins night of the mannequins night of the mannequin I think it's the end of the mannequin. That is not correct. It's about this boy who he does this prank with his friends where they bring this mannequin to the movie theater, right? And they get all, you know, ready. They put this mannequin in the little seat at the movie theater and they're like, ha 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 ha, we're gonna have the mannequin like stay in the movie theater and like prank everyone. And then this little boy, he sees the mannequin at the end of the movie get up and walk out. And he's like, oh my God, there's literally a mannequin roaming the streets. We are not safe. This mannequin is going to kill everybody. I have to save everyone. I have to fix this. Oh my god. And so he decides to take it upon himself to save everyone. And in the process, he kind of falls into a 
scary, stressful um, mental state that the like reader is fully realizing like, oh shit, oh no, 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 don't do that. And to me, that's similar to Goodnight Mommy at the very end, the twist at the end. Yeah. I have a confession though. I haven't watched the original one yet because I watched the US one when it came out. And I know that people hate the US one, which is super fair. I haven't seen the original. I know when I see the original, I'm going to be like, oh my God, really much better than the US one. Um, But I have yet to see it. But I still feel like I got what the original one was probably saying in a better way from the US one without yet having to see it. But probably don't watch the US one first if you're going to watch Goodnight Mommy. So those are my recommendations. Next, um, I'm going to talk about We Have to Remove This Post by Hannah Berwitz. Um, It is a novella. I didn't really like that much, but the concept, as far as the concept goes, um, I'm going to recommend this book or movie. Sorry. So the concept of this is that this woman works as a censor for social media. Um, and basically it, it's a retroactive novella in which she, the main character is writing a letter to a lawyer, kind of chronicling her experiences at this place. Right. And so she is talking about her entering the job and then to her leaving it and kind of her whole experience. And it's really disturbing because she and her people are experiencing creepy things because they're reading all about these terrible people and deleting their posts or censoring their posts or seeing all these things that shouldn't be consumed by the public but also the book was not as disturbing as i wanted it to be it's not like i wanted to like to be like grossed out like exploitation film i'm not into that but i wanted it to be a little bit more like holy shit and i feel like a lot of the horror in this book was just for shock value like slurs were said and stuff and i thought it was like really stupid so just the concept was interesting and so if you're looking for something like this concept you've also probably already seen this movie but censor kind of low-hanging fruit i know but this movie censor is about this girl who lost her sister when she was a child and she's working as a censor for i guess the british government i don't i've watched it a while ago and she's censoring films that may be too explicit for the public to watch and it's kind of set a little bit in the past i think i want to say like the 80s or 90s Again, I watched it a while ago. And um, she comes across a film that reminds her a lot of her experience on the night that she lost her sister. And she was like, oh my god, I found the murderer to my sister. And, you know, through this, she kind of goes a little bit downhill. Um, And so it's really interesting. It's the same vibe because it's a censor and it's censor and, you know, stuff like that. Um, But censor is kind of more so what I wanted. We had to remove this post to be. So yeah, um, both are kind of quick view, quick reads, go ahead with it. Next, Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand is a really interesting book. I would recommend listening to it as an audiobook because it reads kind of like a podcast because every character, um, it's basically a series of interviews from this band from the 70s talking about their time recording at this manor called Wilding Hall in rural England. And each character of the band is a different voice actor, so it's really immersive and fun. And I feel like I wouldn't have liked it as much if I just read it because it's kind of simple. It's not too horror. It's just kind of like the ambiance is there, right? So it's fun if you like mockumentary style things and horror and things that kind of are dealing more with trauma and kind of leave you on like a thoughtful note. I would watch Lake Mungo. Now, I didn't love Lake Mungo. Um, but it was it was an interesting watch. You can probably watch it for free on like Tubi, I think. Um, and it's basically about a family who lose their daughter through mysterious unsolved circumstances. And they're kind of dealing with her loss through a series of interviews, recollections. And it's kind of a winding tale that tells you a lot. But by the end, you're kind of like, what actually happened? So if you kind of like that energy, watch Lake Mungo, read Wilding Hall by Elizabeth Hand. Next, um, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This one's low-hanging fruit too, but I read this right after my True Blood hyperfixation. Um, So if you like this book, go watch True Blood. If you liked True Blood, go read this book. Trigger warning on a lot of these books, but especially this one for S.A., and creepy shit there's actually a lot of fuck shit that goes down i don't know why i remembered it as campy i think it's because it's grady hendrix and so i don't think too seriously about him but this book was fucked up as fuck honestly so 
actually trigger warning with this book for real because of the setting in the south and in terms of a lot of messed up things that happen in this book i think true blood is an apt fit because it also takes place in the south and it's about vampires and it's modern day once again i did not talk about what this book or show were about but basically the book is about this woman who is in a little book club in her hometown that's like not too fun and juicy and one day she has this new neighbor move in he's suspicious and right off the bat she's like what's up with him and obviously the reader knows that he's a vampire but some crazy stuff happens la yada 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 and true blood is pretty much the same thing about this woman named sookie and she's living in this small town in louisiana and this random guy shows up one day because there's a bunch just supernatural people all around the town and people know about vampires in this universe and it's really interesting and it's like kind of commenting on like social class and stuff about how vampires are like you know a marginalized group in some capacity and it's really interesting and she kind of becomes besties with this one vampire so yeah I think that's my last one. I have a couple written down here that I couldn't quite think of matches for. So maybe when I'm further down my um, horror watching marathons that are always ongoing, maybe I'll think of something for you to watch because it's fun. It's interesting and you should check some of these out. And maybe I'll do a part two when I've watched more stuff. So yeah, that's my, those are my recommendations for today for books and movies and TV shows that you might like if you like this one. Did I say that enough? I don't know. But um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you thought these were good matches. Let me know if you think you had better recommendations that might be more well fit. Let me know if you've watched one of these and you're gonna check out the other one. I don't know. Let me know. Let Musa and I know because oh, she's been so curious this entire video. Sorry, my phone is running out of storage, but if you enjoyed this video, let us know. Let me know what else you wanna see from us if Musa wants to be here next time with me. And I will see you later. Thanks for being here again. Bye. Peace and love.